Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. Today I have the new Game of Thrones House of Lannister Lagavulin nine year old versus the Core Range eight year old. If you're not the biggest Game of Thrones fan, but you just want to know how this whiskey fits into the lineup, I'll let you know that when I know them, taste them, and give them a mark. Starting with the House of Lannister nine year old, this one's bottled at 46% ABV and cost me 110 Canadian dollars here at the LCPO. Um, I am a Game of Thrones fan, so of course I'm using my Super Social Club, I sip and I know things whiskey glass. Let's try this out on the nose. So the first thing I get is like this nice rich kind of hickory wood. You get a little bit of like cherry, almost kind of reminiscent of what you'd pick up in the 16 year old. Some sweet elements to this, you almost get like a, kind of like a sweet kind of peatiness, and then you get that typical kind of uh, that Lagavulin campfire kind of smokiness to it as well. Really nice on the nose, very kind of pleasant. Let's go uh, palette. So again, that hickory wood, very, very prominent on the palate as well. Um, black cherry, a little bit of saltiness too, and then finish, memed along in length, I'd say, slightly drying, and then that hickory wood hits you again. It lingers around, same with a little bit of peatiness, smokiness, a little bit of saltiness as well, and that cherry. Uh, really nice whiskey. I would say it's very kind of like almost reminiscent of the 16 year old. You get that cherry kind of note, you get the smoke, it's kind of similar. Um, the only thing I think that the 16 has that this doesn't is has a little more fruit notes to it. Um, but other than that, it's almost kind of like a younger version of the 16. Uh, maybe not as complex, but still really nice whiskey. I'm going to give it um, 86 and a half out of 100. Now for value, I paid 110 Canadian dollars for this, which is pretty expensive considering where you can buy this in other parts of the world. Um, Total Wine in the States has this for 60 US dollars. So when I score for value, I always score for what I paid personally for the bottle. So I'm going to take off a point for value for this one and bring it down to 85.5 uh, out of 100. Now, if I had bought this in the States for $60 US, I'd be bumping it up a half point for value. So kind of just take that into account. But um, overall, really nice whiskey. Let's move on to the eight year old. 48% ABV on this, and it cost me $98 Canadian here in Ontario on the nose. So again, I'm getting that nice, like rich hickory wood note, a little bit of caramel. I'm getting some nice like fruit notes here, like an underripe kind of peach. Maybe like a little bit like star fruit. Star fruit is kind of, kind of like a more mild kind of smelling fruit. Pick up a little bit of that in here. And it's like some nice like sugary notes. It very much reminds me of like that sugar kind of like rock candy. Kind of like came on a stick and it was like crystallized sugar, like flavored crystallized sugar. Kind of get that on here. And then like that nice like uh, Lagavulin smokiness as well. Really, really nice on the nose. Let's try palette. Really, really nice. Grilled lemon, a little bit of saltiness. Get kind of like an earthy kind of style peat. And it's like really nice like tobacco kind of note. Finish, nice long finish here. Um, I get that awesome kind of like steak char. Love that note. And then the peat, it kind of like cleans up a bit. It goes from like kind of like an earthy style on the palate it's like a more like crisp, like refined kind of peat on the finish, which is really kind of cool. Um, get a little bit of lemon again, and then like a nice like creme brulee, almost like desserty kind of note to it on the finish there as well. That's really, really good stuff. Um, finish on this one, really, really nice. Score wise for me, I'm giving it 88 out of 100. For value though, uh, $98 Canadian. It's just a lot of money compared to other markets. I'm gonna take off a point for value Bring it down to, to uh, 87. And again, this one you can get at Total Y in the States for 50 US dollars. If I had bought it for that price, I'd be bumping it up a value point. But for what I paid for, I gotta bump it down one. Um, but still a really nice uh, 87 out of 100 on this. Let's compare these head to head. So both really nice whiskeys, but I did prefer the eight more. I just thought that complexity 
and how that peak kind of like develops from the palette to the finish was really, really cool. I described the 8 as being a little more sharp. It kind of like attacks your palette a bit more versus the 9 where I kind of want to say it's a little more refined almost. I did pick up a little bit of like the Lagavulin in 16 in this expression. So I think that kind of speaks to even like how this whiskey is being marketed, right? The Lagavulin nine-year-old being part of the Game of Thrones kind of lineup in the series. Maybe they're thinking this one, you know, would appeal to someone who really, really likes that Lagavulin 16. because so you're not getting like too much of a variance here. Whereas this one, I think this one is maybe for like, you know, people who are like super peat heads. They love that super complex peated whiskey that, you know, um, an ex-bourbon cast is going to give you versus this one who has maybe a little bit of sherry influence in it as well. Um, I think that, you know, this is using like maybe even more like active kind of cast because you are getting more complexity, I think, in this one, a better finish. Finish in this one, still really nice, a little more drying in this one, I would say, um, but both really nice whiskeys. Here are the scores and here are the scores with the value added points. Now, keep in mind that I am buying this whiskey in one of the worst markets in the entire world. If you bought this in the States, $60, $50, great value. Um, really looking forward to doing the rest of the Game of Thrones whiskeys and kind of comparing them to their core range counterpart and kind of seeing like, is it worthwhile, you know, going outside the core range and purchasing this as a standalone whiskey or is it just something kind of like marketed up, uh, you know, for the hype of Game of Thrones. So look forward to those reviews. Make sure you subscribe, uh, comment, give it a little thumbs up if you want. And as always, cheers. Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage.